what's going on for you and how can I help? Well, thank you for, uh, for the appointment. Um, really big fan of yours. Um, so small little story about myself. Um, you know, I had the plan of, uh, going into law school right, right after, uh, undergrad. Um, I got, uh, I took a LSAT prep course during the summer. Um, you know, it was about to take it good time. You know, thought I would, you know, take it around like the September LSAT, send applications, you know, October, whatnot. Um, but in that prep course, I fell behind. I got my wisdom teeth removed early on. And after that, um, you know, I just can never ke keep up. Um, so that's what happened. Right, right. I hear what you're saying. So you're back on track now. When are you planning on taking the LSAT and what do you think is giving you the most trouble right now? Oh, I want to say I want to get it done. I want to say August. Like, I want to send the applications as soon as possible. Like, you know, early admissions. I already delayed my application process. So the least I could do is, you know, I'll submit it as early as possible. But just talking with a friend, I think it might be best for me to um, maybe cut that mentality shorter because it seems like the more I give myself time, um, the more like my mind thinks, oh, you have time. So, um, but definitely July or August. Um, gotcha. Take the LSAT. Yeah, good. I think there's a lot of value in picking a target and sticking to it just to keep you on track and to keep you motivated, especially if you're stuck at home under quarantine and feel kind of aimless, so much uncertainty in the world. But you know, regardless that you are going to take the LSAT at some point, whether you're doing the flex or the digital, either way, the content is the same. So focus on mastering the content, the games, reasoning, reason, reading comp, the sections, the pacing, all of that still applies. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I would say my biggest, where I need to, where I need the most help or where I need to put my time in right now is Logic Games. Um, so I have your uh, subscription, which I really need to get onto. Um, I haven't finished it. I've gone like halfway and I'll forget and restart it. Um, but that's where I need to, that's where I know the least the ones that intimidate me the most, maybe that intimidation factor is why I don't, uh, I don't go through with it. The other games, um, I'll probably be buying your, um, more of your stuff because I, I was a big fan. Um, but I do have some, like a good sense of like understanding of them. It's just like, you know, getting better, you know? Um, but my plan right now is do your, um, learn the logic games. Um, through your video course and then buy your planner, the LSAT planner, um, which the weekly ones, because it seems like I have the, or the daily ones. Um, so yeah. Yeah, perfect. You've got the plan of attack, you've got the course. So basically it'll show you exactly what to do every single day over the course of your prep, which books to read, which chapters to read specifically, which articles, which course video lessons to complete, and then do several LSAT practice problems of that type. And if you yeah. need a different study plan, just reach out to me and I'll send it to you. I think it's really important that you have that level of specificity regarding what to do so you can stay on track and you know you complete these specific things in this exact order. It removes all the guesswork so you can just progress one baby step at a time. So it makes the whole thing seem a lot less overwhelming and a lot more manageable. Content, do you, uh, do you have to buy there? Which I don't mind. All you need to buy to use my schedules are the actual LSAT exams. LSAT, published okay. by LSAC, and you can get them in the prep books on Amazon. You can use PDFs if you happen to have those. And what I really recommend is to get the official LSAT prep plus from LSAC so that you have the exams in the exact same digital format that you'll be doing them on test day. Yeah. I saw one of your posts yesterday, then I screenshotted it because I thought uh, it spoke out a lot to me. Like It was like the process of studying for the LSAC, and it was like uh, something about like learning and then something. Yeah, laser, laser, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I would still say, humbly speaking, I'm still in that laser or in the L part of the LSAT, uh, studying for the LSAT, but you know, I just have to get to it. Um, you know, like I already, uh, I wrote a pretty good personal statement, I would say. I've been working on that since like the winter and then just recently in quarantine, I have a second good draft. I have uh, the 
you know, president, you know, extracurriculars, great internships. So it's just the high GPA. It's just this, the LSAT score, which I need to finish my application process to really be competitive. Yeah. Well, the good news is that it sounds like you have the other parts of your application already pretty strong. You've got the mm-hmm. extracurriculars, you've got the GPA. Now just put icing on the top with the killer LSAT score. And that's actually the most important part of the right. application overall. So if you can master that, you're a shoe in And so the fact that you're at the L portion of laser right now, the first stage of LSAT prep learning the theory, that's totally fine. You've got three, four months till you take the LSAT. You said you're aiming for July or August and we're in mid-April right now. You've got plenty of time to master this exam. If you've got my course, you actually already get a day-by-day study plan included. And if you need a different one, just email me and I'll send it to you. And it'll give you the concrete steps that you need to remove the guesswork. And so you want to move from L to A to S to E to R, learning, accuracy, sections, exams, and review. It'll take you from beginning to end. And it'll show you how to pull in the course lesson videos in conjunction with the prep tests. And like I said, do the prep tests in the digital LSAT format on LSAC's site, whether you're doing digital or online with the flex, doesn't matter. Either way, the format is the same. The countdown timer, the one question at a time, all that stuff is in there. And so you'll be practicing exactly like you're going to have it on game day. Yeah, yeah. Um, another, uh, another part that I uh, just reading your emails, I've really liked, um, well, to, I like the meditation aspect of it. I didn't know how like important that is. Um, when I, when I was studying for the LSAT during the winter time, um, you know, I even downloaded the call map. So I don't know if you have that out there, uh, yeah. but definitely I would recommend just for overall great, like for, just for sanity. Um, as well as something I've done with at least my personal statement, which I, you know, got from, you know, from you is the money. Um, so I, me and my friend are now being accountability partners to each other. And I was like, if I don't send you my, um, personal statement, you know, I'm going to owe you like certain amount of dollars. So actually funny thing is I have $15 on today to start again with the LSAT <laughs> process. So, um, it, it's funny how money could really be an incentive. <laughs> it is, it is. And that's the thing, you know, the, the price aspect of this, you put the incentive on yourself. If you don't study, it's going to cost you 15 bucks. So you're actually saving 15 bucks by studying based on the agreement that you established with your friend. And that's important because it might seem silly and seem like a token now, but if you think about it, you get a top LSAT score, you get thousands and thousands of dollars in scholarship money. So what we're doing is, we're taking that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow and we're sprinkling that gold all along the way, all along your path between now and then so that you have a bit more immediacy in terms of the incentives. But the payoff at the yes. end of this process, when you get that top score is enormous. But like, we, like you said earlier, if the LSAT seems far off and distant, it's less urgent in the short term and other things can get in the way. So if you place those short term incentives along the road to success, it'll keep you moving along. Mm-hmm. All right, I have one question uh, sure. for you. Um, and again, there's something I learned, you got from you, the schedule, which seems really smart, the, you know, wake up early and then like hit that nine to 12 and then, you know, lunchtime or whatever, then like one to three, and then you still have time you know, overall over your day. I think during this quarantine, something that has prevented me from studying is that that mentality of like, I started waking up like at 6, 5 a.m. and like that's good. Did my meditation, I'm Catholic, pray, read or whatever, social, little social media um, for like a couple of days or so. And then I got into that habit. It was like, oh, I woke up at 8 a.m. instead of 6 a.m. Therefore, you know, I, I can't start at 9 or 10 a.m. like I would like to. And like that's been like that terrible mentality that I've been having. Like, uh, like if I don't fit that 9, you know, that's – schedule particularly i'm like no i'll just do it tomorrow like i'll try to wake up but like you know it's been such a failure so like do you have a plan b or like another like uh or like do you have any advice for that well you could shift everything later theoretically in practice though that's that's much harder to do right so i think it all starts with step one if you woke up at 8 a.m one day that's fine but next day get back at it with 6 a.m and if you just have that alarm go off at 5 6 a.m no matter what it's going to be a lot harder for you to sleep in, to, to stay up late that night. 
Mm -hmm. So I would say keep the early morning consistency there because while the LSAT prep may have fallen by the wayside, I'll bet you still went on the social media, right? It, yeah. it, you know, it, it hooks you in. That's, that's part of the system. It's not a, a, it doesn't speak on you directly because everyone's affected in that way. But you've got to just set yourself up for success from day one. And that starts with you waking up. If you stay up late, it's much easier to do non-LSAT things at 11 p.m. than it is to study for the LSAT at 11 p.m. Right. If you wake up at 5, 6 a.m., you're not going to be wasting time in the morning. You're like, I woke up for a reason. I'm going to knock out the LSAT and be good for the day. So I'd say just keep setting that alarm early and you'll get back into it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, um, so that'll be doing uh, afternoon practice because I didn't wake up so early, but hopefully I can start uh, waking up early. And then in that week where I was waking up early, it's crazy how much, you know, how productive you could actually, who would have thought? Uh, well, it's also nice because nobody else is up that early. So those oh, distractions aren't there. Yeah. And even for the days where you do wake up late, you know, that's fine. It's okay to have a day off every now and then, but maybe do a little something at least. At least if you could knock out one hour or two hours, that's better than zero. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and then uh, for personal statements and everything like that, um, do by any chance, I don't know if you have it on your website. Like I know you've given out advice. Do you like read them? Like, do you charge anything like to potentially give advice for that or no? Or would that be like an email type of thing? I do have packages for admissions co coaching and I could send you more information on that. Yeah. Okay, great, great. Um, I want, you know, besides the LSA, which hopefully, you know, first I get that all, I want my uh, application to be holistically, because even though the LSA is important, the more I've uh, learned about you know, I've gone to law schools, like they do take a really holistic approach, I think, uh, to um, the application process. Well, they do sure. look at everything. They do look at everything. Yeah. The numbers, obviously, are the most important factor, but you want everything to be strong. And so it's not as if working more on your personal statement has to detract from your LSAT prep. You could switch back and forth, take a break from the LSAT every now and then. And then rather than doing something unrelated, at least you edit your personal statement a little bit more. And then you've also got the time down the line once you've taken the LSAT, you've got a couple of weeks before you get your score back. And so that's a great time to work on those other aspects as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've had, I think I know this, the answer to this, but I signed up for LSATs maybe one or twice. And then like I canceled them, never took the exam. Uh, law schools do not see that, correct? So if you withdraw before yeah. the exam day and you don't ever set foot inside there yeah. and you withdrew on, online, then they will never know that you were even registered for that test. Okay, got it. Okay, just making sure. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're about up for today, Jesus, but it's been great connecting with you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the emails and everything like that. I do appreciate like your content. It's just, um, you know, finding that, I think one time you called it like the Jedi focus or whatever. Like I really just have to get into that and like the rest is on me. Exactly. So, it's exactly right. I appreciate the call. Yeah, of course. Sure. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? I would say like, uh, like definitely like some inspiration. Um, so, you know, guidance. So overall guidance is what I would say. Awesome. Awesome. Well, keep in touch. Let me know if you need anything as you move forward. Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.